And then there's this. I'm going to cover this first for the next 20 minutes with Paul Joseph Watson. Obama claims CIA involvement in Iran patently false. And we've got the clip. I forgot to send it to you guys. Well, you YouTube, uh, Obama says CIA not in Iran. I meant to send it to you this morning. I forgot. Uh, you know, just so people can hear the guy saying it before we go over this, because because Paul Watson wrote a detailed two-page report that, that that's each paragraph's got links to their own admissions, but this doesn't even cover half of it. We need some master article, Paul, that then shows how the BBC put out fake photos and admits it, and how Bush put the executive order out to call for a revolution and destabilization. And because, I mean, you, you read Paul's article, it proves this is staged in Iran, but there's even more proof. And, and look, I don't have a dog in this fight. I don't like big government itself. Almost all government is extremely corrupt in all times in history. The Mullahs are involved in all sorts of corruption and controlling the economy and profiting for their families. Standard. Are they one one hundredth as systematic, as scientific, and evil and tyranny? No. They actually rationalize what they do in their ideologues and believe in what they're doing. That's why the globalists absolutely hate them. They just absolutely can't stand them. And the governments are involved in all sorts of corruption and problems, and we're on record about that. The point is, Iran's been overthrown twice by the United States and England on record. That's at CIA history. You can go to CIA.gov, and they brag about it. Now they stage terror attacks and blamed it on the government. Last time they staged terror attacks on mosque, blamed it on Mohammed Mosaddegh, the secular leader, overthrew it, then double-crossed the mullahs and put in the Shah, whose son they're trying to put in right now. And they're going to discredit this new guy, who it turns out is the commander of the Beirut bombings, the attacks on the Marines, the real terrorist leader. But then before that, the foreign secretary agent to the U.S., so he's the guy involved in Iran-Contra, too. So this guy's a total spook. Mosawi well, is a piece of work. So I wanted Paul to chronicle all of this and run through it right now because he can do it in a measured, focused manner. I'm always pausing to gasp for breath just to how amazing this is. So the bottom line is... That girl gets killed, people get killed, it's terrible, it's horrible, just like when the police shoot people in the face after the Red Sox victory and the young woman bleeds to death and the police seal the footage of that. They don't want to show you dead and dying Iraqis, they don't want to show you the globalist funded Al-Qaeda blowing up mosques and school buses in Iran and the White House admitting they did it and Obama continuing what Bush did. That's on record. This is all meant not to bring down Iran, it's meant to create an image of demonization for the Iranian government so it can be toppled with military bombardment. And then even if the mullahs can stay in power, it will then knock them back to the Stone Age. And that's what the globalists want. They don't want any industrialized first world nation. And Iran is a glistening, beautiful country in many cases that looks cleaner and more modern than Chicago or New York. They do not want it and they want to blow it to to a kingdom come like they did Serbia. And they used Al-Qaeda to attack Serbia. And when Serbia fought back, they said, oh my gosh, look, they're murdering innocent Muslims. And it's a setup, ladies and gentlemen. It's a setup. It always is. It's divide and conquer. They use Sunni against Shiite in Iraq. And Shiite against Sunni in Iran. Sunni against Shiite, same thing. Shiite against Sunni. Back and forth, all manipulation, all to knock that country out. And then a lot of Americans go, well, that's why we stay on top. USA ain't number one. We've been used to fund this. We get the blame. It's offshore globalists kamikaze us into these countries. Everybody knows the U.S. and England are funding and running all this. And then Obama gets up on TV. He gets up on TV and says, this is ridiculous. Paul Watson, I mean, Obama, I, Obama a month ago was doing overtures to Iran of peace, and I'm on record. I wish listeners would find the clip because I don't have a staff to do it. But I've been on the air over and over again. When he did that overture to Iran, I said, they're going to attack Iran or stage a revolution. Anytime he does something, it's the opposite. 
He tells you he doesn't introduce gun bills. That's all he does. He tells you he's not going to grab your property. That's all he does. He tells you there's no compulsory service. They try to pass the bills. They, he tells you he's not going to hire any lobbyists. That's all he does is hire lobbyists. He tells you everything he says is a lie. Paul Watson. Hello, Ali. It's good to be back. Hey, bro. Uh, so break it down for us, your excellent article. Obama claims CIA involvement in Iran patently false. Break it down. Well, that's right. A few days ago, Obama admitted to the fact that the 1953 overthrow of the democratically elected government of Mossadegh in Iran was uh, accomplished by means of the uh, CIA. Now, that fact is documented historical fact. It's not disputed anymore. And yet, there are some neocons who like to hang out at the Free Republic site, which I came across when I was researching this again earlier today, who still deny the fact that the CIA was even involved in the 1953 overthrow of Mossadegh. So that's the level of denial going on. And then with this question... Well, that's about, because they hate, they hate radical Muslims so much they can't believe the radical Muslims are the sword of the New World Order, the sword of victory over all three societies. Right, and then with the question about is the CIA involved in the current unrest, one of the first links to pop up, if you research that in Google, is this Free Republic thread where somebody posts an article asking, are the CIA involved? As we'll explain, it's, it's not even debatable. But then the responses to it are, I don't care. I hope the CIA are involved. I certainly won't shed a tear if they are. Another one says, I certainly hope so. Of course they are. And they're actually, <laughs> this is the horrible irony of it all. They're sub not that we support Ahmadinejad, and we've had to emphasize that over and over again, because pe some people have difficulty holding more than one thought in their head at one time. But these neocons are supporting Mousavi, who in the 80s, as you mentioned earlier, directed the terrorist campaign and selected the terrorists to carry out the uh, Beirut barracks bombing and others in the 1980s. They love this him. Is the guy, this is the guy who oversaw the murder of hundreds of U.S. Marines. 220 U.S. Marines died in the Beirut barracks bombing that was directed by Mousavi. And all these neocons are now supporting him and saying that, good, the CIA should overthrow Ahmadinejad and put in the very regime that slaughtered hundreds of U.S. Marines in the 80s. So you have that going on. Then you've got talking heads on establishment media news networks who have suddenly found this new concern for the mistreatment of protesters, which is obviously absent whenever it's anybody protesting against the war in Iraq. Well, here's an or, example. In China, all over the place, the police are caught dealing drugs, killing people, running mafia ops. Whole cities are falling to the Chinese people. The police are machine gunning them. We have all the YouTube videos of them shooting people, attacking villagers, and none of our news will carry it because they love China. They won't show a young girl bleeding to death there. In fact, or they'll show them choking some woman, taking her to a mobile execution van, saying it's good. Or melting people's flesh down for cosmetics sold in finer cosmetic stores in the U.S. Exactly. They only show somebody dying in a tragic way when it aids them so they can blow entire skyscrapers up with giant 2,000-pound smart bombs, blowing women and children into little pieces. Then the neocons will say they love it. Oh, but right now they're so upset for her. Oh, I mean, again, ladies and gentlemen, it's a giant chess game. They want to overthrow Iran. They admit they were in there trying to start revolutions. They admit they said that um, this guy, the opposition leader, lost. Uh, well, first they were saying he won two hours before the polls close. Then the government comes out and said, no, he lost. This is all a pure setup. And Alex, you've got former CIA heads on the news. There was one on Wolf Blitzer the other day, you know, saying that we should track all the uh, mistreatment of the protesters because there's a brutal regime in place that tortures protesters and dissidents. A former CIA head, it was the CIA 
that trained Savak after the 1953 overthrow, trained them in torture techniques that they'd copied from the Nazis. But now the CIA is all concerned about how dissidents in Iran are treated. Now, obviously, we don't want anyone to be mistreated, but it just shows the rampant level of hypocrisy involved. And as oh, it's totally insane, and now the uh, stooge son of the Shah keeps crying like Glenn Beck on TV with fake crying, saying he's so sad for this girl when his father murdered at least 300,000 people, ripping children's tongues out in front of their parents on record. The CIA's running around torturing everybody, but, oh, with no proof, oh, they might be torturing. This is the just disgust, and now blowing up the Marines is good. Yeah, the neocons now support a terrorist who killed hundreds of U.S. Marines. That's patriotic now, I guess. 